Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're joining us. Uh, my name is Jason Walls from QA Cafe, and I'm here, here with Niels Widger as well. And uh, we're going to be talking about using CI CD tools when you're doing your CPE development. Um, it's something that has been coming up a lot lately, and with the launch of our parallel testing option for CD router, it's now sort of a <laughs> It's a process that everyone has been dealing with and we want to explain a little bit about how to do it in CD router and also uh, what has sort of led us to this point. Um, all right, let's get started. So like I said, I'm here with Niels Widger. Uh, he's a senior developer uh, here at QA Cafe and he is kind of the brains behind the CD router API and most of what you see when you interact with, uh, with CD router, our test tool uh, was designed by Niels. So he's the best person to talk about how to do this, hands down. Um, so welcome Niels. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of things before um, what uh, Niels is going to cover, and that includes sort of why we're talking about this today, you know, why, why CICD when developing CPE. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the test principles that you should keep in mind when you're doing that sort of thing, and then Niels is going to go into um, showing you the ins and outs of the CD Router API and how they can work with your CICD systems. Um, and then he's going to show you uh, the parallel testing option and how it works uh, in CD Router 13. And then we'll go over some of your questions. All right, so let's get started. So why 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 are we talking about this now? Um, with this is it, things have kind of come up a lot lately, talking about you know more powerful gateways and and uh, kind of developers having more of a software defined or software design focus when it comes to developing CPE, and that's really where this is all coming from. So. The gateway has kind of gone through an evolution, you know, that's good for us who deal with gateways a lot. Um, they're becoming a lot more powerful and having a lot more features. Um, operators are looking to utilize that to sort of differentiate services and add new applications to the, those gateways uh, in real time, you know, in a, in a faster or more dynamic way. Um, and then there's also pressure from, you know, security and privacy perspectives when there is something that has gone wrong or is this, there is something that needs to be fixed. Um, things have changed from the past where you're sort of waiting for an entirely new firmware build to go through an extensive process before you get to the point that you're deploying it on your gateways. Um, and so the actual development process has sped up and working it into a continuous uh, integration and continuous delivery environment is how, you know, it, it, it helps us do that and helps us build those, uh, those fixes faster. Um, and then, just like I said, so that the Excel, the, the firmware and software lifecycle has really accelerated, um, in part from demand from operators, right? So, you know, it, it, in addition to, you know, pushing new fixes and pushing better firmware, but also adding those differentiated services to a gateway that can handle them. Um, the other thing that has sort of changed as a result of this is that the, the development roles have shifted, you know, we, we talk about this, uh, the supply chain in the development of a CPE, and there were very defined roles um, many years ago where it's, you know, the, the QA team is doing um, QA testing, the system integrator is doing one thing, um, and those things, but, but the developer is, is doing their stuff before they're handing it off to other people, and that has really sort of split out, and especially because these things might be being handled by different people at different points in the supply chain, right? Um, so you have the hardware vendor building the things that they're doing, handing it off to uh, a middleware vendor. There's a lot more middleware vendors now than there were in the past. Um, they might be using an open source platform for that middleware or building on top of one or designing their own. Um, that, is, that is almost an entire new market now. Um, and so that is the sort of stuff that needs to be tested in this environment. Um, and then ultimately it falls on the system integrators at that point to put it all together and run that, that kind of testing as well. And different people in this supply chain are gonna be doing different kinds of testing uh, at different points. The other thing that sort of shifted is that there's more operator control over the development of the CPE. So there's uh, sort of, it's more communicative on their part where they have a, a bigger hand in what's going on at each point of development, pushing out their requirements sooner to different uh, people in the supply chain. Um, having some, in some cases, developing the CPE themselves uh, and pulling these different components from different places, even if, you know, even if those places happen to be their vendors uh, and then doing the final system integration themselves. Um, and so those kinds of operators are, are relying on a CI CD environment to develop their CPE. Um, and then, like I said before, the, the developers are the, now the ones who are doing the majority of the testing long before it ever gets to, to a Q&A team. Um, and they're relying on CI/CD to do their testing. 
Part of the importance of this is developing an overall test strategy to make sure that you're able to, um, to, to incorporate it into your CICD environment uh, effectively and you know, across all the different organizations and people that you're dealing with. Um, we have a really great article that I'm going to share at the end of this, sort of in our resources slide, that talks extensively about this, like what kinds of tests you should do at different points and who should be doing them. But ultimately, the parts of a testing strategy include uh, the frequency and testing of builds, like how basically how often you do them. Um, in, you know, do you do them per commit? Do you do them nightly? Do you do them over the course of a long period of time, like over a weekend? Um, and how many do you do at the same time? Are you testing different uh, different builds at different times? You know, are you what failures are you looking for? What do you do when you encounter a failure? Um, Part of that strategy is the test coverage itself. You know what tests you want to do at different stages, and those those are going to be different depending on what stage of development you're in. Like there is a different point when you should test feature and protocol um, testing to make sure that everything is working correctly versus moving on to longer term performance and stability testing. Part of that obviously is which continuous integrations tools to use at which point in the development cycle, um, and we actually got a lot of different answers. Uh, from that, it was, it was really cool. Thank you for your uh, for your answers to the questions during the registration. Uh, we got a good idea of what uh, people are using out there, and people use all kinds of different things at different stages of testing. Um, and then also how to coordinate with your partners in your supply chain. So how to communicate uh, the testing, replicate the testing, um, and making sure that you know failures are getting addressed in, in that process. And that's one of the things that CD Router can help with just because we make it easy to sort of share and export uh, your results into somebody that, so that somebody else who has CD Writer can replicate the testing that you do. Okay, so how do you do this in CD Writer? I'm gonna hand this off to Niels. Um, and this is ultimately about how to use the CD Writer web API with your CI CD environment and the specific API calls and scripts that you can use to do that. So that's what Niels is gonna show you. But the one thing I do wanna point out is that uh, you know, when we were looking at the registrations for this webinar, uh, the vast majority of you are CD Router users, and that's good. So the stuff that Niels is going to be covering is, you know, is, is things for people who are a little bit at least familiar with, with how CD Router works. Um, so just keep that in, in mind as we go. All right, Niels, go ahead. Great. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Um, thank you all for coming. So uh, CD Router includes a JSON REST API, which we call the CD Router Web API, which allows programmatic access to everything available on your CD Router system. This includes everything that's also available through the CD Router Web UI. So this includes things like creating and editing packages and configs, launching packages, monitoring running jobs, and then inspecting and exporting results. QA Cafe maintains an open source Python API client library on GitHub, which is called cdrouter.py. And that provides full access to all of the API endpoints and the data they return in a convenient form. Uh, while you can interact with the API using any HTTP client, so for example, you could use curl, cdrouter.py is the recommended way to interact with your CD router system in automation scripts. Uh, and all the examples I'll be showing you today will be using it. Uh, we provide extensive documentation, which I'll show you some screenshots of in a minute, uh, for all the classes and methods and fields uh, in the Python library. Uh, and finally, uh, cdrouter.py, uh, the repository on GitHub includes a directory of example scripts to help get you started. And we'll be providing links to all that documentation and examples uh, at the end of the webinar. So to get started with cdrouter.py, first you'll need to install it. Uh, installation of cdrouter.py is done through pip, the Python pi package manager. Uh, we regularly publish new versions of cdrouter.py to pypy, the Python package index. And you can always use the pip command to install or upgrade your copy of cdrouter.py. If your Python installation does not already have pip installed, you'll need to install it um, by following the instructions uh, in the link uh, at the bottom of this slide. But once you have pip installed, um, you can install cdrouter.py itself uh, by simply running pip install cdrouter. So to give you a flavor of what cdrouter.py scripts look like. Uh, on this slide, you can see uh, 
sort of the hello world equivalent of a CD router.py script. Uh, in this script, we initialize a CD router instance with the URL to our CD router system and an API token. And then we launch the package with name my package. Uh, and even without knowing anything about the API, CD router.py, or perhaps without even knowing that much about Python, hopefully it's somewhat obvious what's going on in this script. The easiest way to actually run a cdrouter.py script is to pass it to the Python command. So for example, if the script on the previous slide was in a file called hello.py, uh, you can see here how we would run it. All cdrouter.py scripts start by creating an instance of the cdrouter class using its constructor. By convention, we'll assign the instance uh, to a variable called C. And in all future slides, you can assume that in script, C is a CD router instance. Uh, when instantiating a CD router instance, you pass it the URL of the CD router system you wish to interact with. Uh, depending on how your CD router system is configured, uh, you may also need to pass either an API token via the token parameter or a user pass via the user and password parameters. These allow cdrouter.py to authenticate with the system. Uh, and you can see on this slide uh, an example of each of these uh, three different forms. Uh, as I said, we provide extensive documentation for cdrouter.py. Uh, here you can see a screenshot of the documentation for the cdrouter constructor we were just looking at on the previous slide. Um, the documentation here shows all the parameters and what they do. So once you've created an instance of the CD router class, you can then interact with resources on the system using methods, using the methods of fields such as c.configs, c.packages, c.results, etc. Most resources have basic create, get, edit, and list methods, as well as methods per, for performing actions specific to that resource type. So for example, you can check a config for errors using c.configs.checkconfig or stop a running result with c.results.stop. The documentation for cdrouter.py lists all the available methods for each field. Here's a screenshot of the documentation for the CD router class that we saw previously, where we've just scrolled down a bit. You can see it shows all the fields that are available in the C variable after you've created a CD router instance. So you can see there's a configs field, packages field, and a results field listed among others. The c.packages field is an instance of the packages services class. Here we see the documentation showing the available methods for the c.packages field. So for example, there's an analyze method, meaning we could call c.packages.analyze to see what tests in a package will be skipped. cdrouter.py also defines classes representing each resource type. These classes make interacting with these resources more convenient. A number of methods, including create methods, take an instance of one of these classes as an argument. So for example, on this slide, we are importing the package class and then using it to create a new package on the cdrouter system with the name mypackage using the config with ID 123. Resources returned by get and list methods also use these same classes. So for example, here we fetch a package with name mypackage2 and assign it to the variable p. The p variable will be an instance of the package class with all the same name and config ID fields as in the previous slide, uh, filled in with the appropriate values. And again, uh, cdrouter.py, its documentation, 
with all the fields available for each class. Here's the documentation for the package class, showing the full list of all fields that are returned when retrieving the package with cdrouter.py. So now that we know the basics of how to install and use cdrouter.py, how do we use it to integrate CD Router into our CI CD pipeline? Well, first, you'll probably, using the CD Router web UI in a browser, want to manually create the configs and packages that you're going to use to test your CPE in the pipeline. Once these are created and working, you can then create a new CI job in your pipeline, which runs at some point after the firmware image has been built and installed on a CPE connected to your CD router system. At that point, a CD router.py script can be run, which launches one or more packages, monitors them as they test your CPE, and then inspects and analyzes the finished results. Let's step through each of these three parts and see some examples of how you might do them using CD router.py. The first step that our cdrouter.py script needs to perform is to launch one or more packages, which will be used to test the firmware on your CPE. There are many ways to go about this. You could hard code the name of the package or packages to run. You could pass them in as arguments to your script. You could launch certain packages tagged with certain values, or you could even launch packages based on package owner or some combination of all three. The simplest method is to simply have your script launch a package by name. Uh, the name of the package could also be passed in as an argument to the script. So here uh, in this example, we're getting the package named my package and launching it. could also launch packages that have certain tags. So in this example, we're launching all packages tagged with CI and model one, two, three, thus presumably only running packages meant to be run against the CPE with model one, two, three during CI runs. And finally, you could launch packages based on the package owner. Here we fetch the nightly user and then use it to launch all packages owned by the nightly user. In addition to launching packages, you may also want to tag the result that gets created to make it easier to identify what CPE model or what firmware version it was run, run against. Assigning a tag to the result when launching the package is a great way to keep your results organized. Additionally, it's sometimes convenient to override the value of a test bar when launching a package, and we'll show you how you can do that within an API script as well. So here in this example, we're launching a package with ID 123, telling CD Router to tag the result that gets created with the tags model123 and v123. Presumably, these represent the CP model number and the firmware image present on the CPE uh, at the time of testing. And both of these might be passed into the cdrouter.py script as our arguments. Overriding the value of a test bar when launching a package is also possible. Here again, we launch the package uh, with ID 123, telling CD router to override the value of the test bar LAN IP with the value 192.168.13 using the extra CLI args option. Once a package is launched, a new job is created and placed in CD Router's job queue. Depending on how many other jobs are in the queue and what else is running on the system, the job may not start immediately. Once the job starts running, however, 
a result is created which contains the pass fail information related to the test run. Your CD router.py script will probably want to wait for the job to start and then finish before analyzing any test failures which may have occurred. A simple while loop is all we need to wait for a job to start. Here we launch a job and then pull the job once a second until it gets assigned a result ID, thus signaling that it has begun execution. When the script breaks out of the while loop, we know that the result has started and that its ID is in j.resultID. We use a very similar approach to wait for the job to finish. Here we pull the job until its status tells us that it is no longer running. Now we know that the job is finished and we can inspect the finished results in the result identified by j.resultID. Once the job has finished running, our CI script can now analyze the results. What exactly this means varies, but at a minimum, we probably want to see if any tests have failed, and we may want to export the result so we can store it elsewhere. The simplest option is to check if any tests failed. If we have the final result stored in a variable r, which we fetch using the c.results.get method. We can do that by looking at the fail field, which contains a count of how many tests failed. If it's non-zero, we can then print a simple message and return a non-zero status, which in most CI environments causes the CI job to fail. At that point, someone will see that the CI job failed and co can go look at the result on the CD router system to figure out what went wrong. If we want to be a bit more advanced, our CI script could also pull out the name of each failed test. In this script, we do that by iterating over all the tests that failed in the result by looking at those whose result field equals fail. For, a, for each failed test, we then construct a simple message saying test x failed. This could give the person looking at the failed CI jobs output a bit more context about what went wrong before they go and look at the result in more depth on the CD router system itself. And finally, when a result contains failure, failures, you may want to export the result. This script shows how you can do that by downloading an export archive containing the result, which will also include all the logs and capture files, and then saving it to a file on disk. From there, the CI job could store the export archive as an artifact of the CI job itself so that it can be easily imported into another CD router system, for example. There are many other future ideas that you could explore to make your CI job even more advanced and useful. For example, you could use cdrouter.py to automatically rerun failed tests. You could construct a Jenkins JUnit style XML file containing information about which tests failed. Or you could even automatically create a new issue or support ticket for failures. So now I'm going to uh, give you a quick demo of parallel testing, the new feature introduced in CD Router 13, which allows you to run multiple jobs simultaneously on the same CD Router system. So yeah, first thing you wanna do is see how many test instances are available on the CD Router system. Uh, this tells you how many packages can run in parallel uh, on that system. So on the system page here, this tells us that we have five test instances. That means we can run five packages at the same time. To actually use parallel testing and to use those test instances, 
what we want to do is we want to launch, uh, let's say, let's launch three packages. So I'll select uh, three packages here. And click launch. So it'll take a second, but CD router will launch all three packages and add them to the jobs queue. So now we're on the jobs queue page. And as you can see, um, because we have five test instances, we're allowed to run five packages at the same time. And since we launched, we only launched three, all three are now in the running state. From there, you can watch all three run just like you would be able to run, uh, watch any other uh, running package. And if you go to the home screen, um, we now cycle through the current status of each uh, running package both in the uh, scoreboard at the top of the screen here, as well as in the status bar at the bottom of the screen. Um, and that's the, that's parallel testing. That's the demo. So I'll pass things uh, over to Jason. All right, thanks Niels. Um, that was good and uh, pretty in-depth, and we do have some questions. I do want to cover this slide really quickly before we do that. So if you have, do have any questions about um, adding parallel testing to your system, or if you're exploring a new system and want to know how that works, um, obviously feel re free to reach out to Steve and the team at sales at qacafe.com. Um, this second link is that article I was talking about in the beginning. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll probably be refreshing this and sending it out again, probably, uh, you know, at least on social media, just because it, it keeps coming up. But this is this is kind of our, our, our brief guideline on how to develop a, uh, a test strategy that I was talking about in the beginning. Um, you know, when you're looking to figure out which of these scripts that Niels has shown that you want to uh, incorporate and how you want to incorporate them and which packages to run and who should be running them, um, that, that article is really good for that. And then Niels added uh, some of the resources that he was just talking about, right? So uh, the uh, documentation for cdwriter.py. Um, we have some example scripts on GitHub that you can look at. Um, and then uh, the documentation.